again, it's time for that weekly visit with our good friend and host, Dr. Watson. Let's join him, shall we? Ah, there you are, Mr. Bell. Good evening, Dr. Watson. Well, have you quite recovered from your holiday festivities? I think so, my boy. And I was particularly flattered by the number of friends who were kind enough to remember a rather elderly and lonely doctor at this time of year. Well, as long as you keep telling those swell Sherlock Holmes stories, you'll never be lonely, Dr. Watson. Then I'd better get on with tonight's new adventure. (laughs) It involved us in one of the most shocking scandals of the 19th century. A scandal that, had it ever emerged in the light of day, might easily have brought ruin and disgrace to one of the most famous men who ever came a member of the House of Lords. Well, this one I've got to hear. Now, Dr. Watson, how about the 19th century scandal in which you and the great Sherlock Holmes became involved? Well, Mr. Bell, that adventure began in the very early days of the great man's career. World acclaim and handsome fees were some years ahead of him. And in those times, we spent many long evenings discussing whether a decent living could be obtained by the practice of criminal detection. On the day that this particular story began, we just finished our breakfast. Holmes, a curved pipe clenched between his teeth, was scanning the personal columns of the morning paper. I can almost hear him now, as he said... Demi Watson... The agony column of the Times is more than usually barren this morning. Are you looking for a possible client, Holmes? Naturally. Since we already owe Mrs. Hudson for two months' rent here, and our doorbell has been frighteningly silent during that period, I must see what possible service I may have render these unhappy correspondents. All right, I'll sell the column, but I couldn't see anything very promising. No, Watson. It's a rag bag of bizarre happenings. What a chorus of groans, cries, and bleatings. One skims through them, and what does one glean? Lady with a black bow at the Princess Skating Club wishes to meet gentleman who was kind enough to... That we may ignore, I think. <laughs> she doesn't sound as though she needs your services. Oh, well, yes, madam. <laughs> Surely Jimmy will not break his mother's heart. Hmm. That appears to be irrelevant. If the lady who fainted on the top deck of the Brixton bus... She doesn't interest me either, Watson. No, probably anyone else who wasn't on that bus. Every day my heart longs for... Ah, bleak, Watson. All this twaddle is unmitigated bleak. It is heartly, Holmes. You haven't had a case for over two weeks. Yes. Sometimes I think I chose the wrong profession. What do the public, the great unobservant public, who can hardly tell a weaver by his tooth or a compositor by his left thumb, care about the finer shades of analysis and deduction? As to my own little practice, it seems to be degenerating into an agency for recovering lost lead pencils and giving advice to young ladies from boarding schools. Holmes, uh, come over here to the window. What's wrong, Watson? Uh, look at that man walking down the street. He's looking at the numbers of the houses. Let's hope 221B is the number he's searching for. What do you make of him, Watson? Oh, let me see, what do I make of him? Well, I would say that he is a foreigner. Yes, foreigner. Look at those flashy clothes and his pointed moustache. Oh, don't be misled by externals, old chap. Observe the steady, controlled gait. No trace of the light agility of the Latins or the military heaviness of the German. No, Watson. I think an English gait in foreign attire would suggest an expatriate Englishman, only just returned from a stay abroad. He is coming here, Holmes. Meet him on the stairs, Watson. It'll save Mrs. Hudson a trip. Yes, so that you are. It's all right, Mrs. Hudson. Uh, how do you do, sir? How do you do? Uh, would you please come along up? That's right, sir. Straight up here. Uh, in, in here. Which of your fellows is Sherlock Holmes? I am, sir. And your name is... Uh... Tremaine. Reginald Tremaine. I'm Dr. Watson. Uh, sit down, won't you, Mr. Tremaine? My business won't take long. Holmes, I need protection. And I'm prepared to pay for it. Protection from what? My life's been threatened. The police wouldn't do a thing for me, so I've come to you. I'm told you detective fellows will do anything for money. No, really, then you've been misinformed, sir. My friend... Your friend is very interested in Mr. Tremaine's problem, Watson. Mm -hmm. Pray continue, sir. Holmes, I want you to warn my cousin. Tell him you'll get nowhere by threatening me. Frighten the wits out of him if you can. I'll give you 20 pounds uh, and another 20 if I need you again. And uh, who is your threatening cousin? Lord Darlington. Oh, really? Charming for that. He's a scoundrel. But his title impressed Scotland Yard. That's why they wouldn't help me. Well, even a title can be vulnerable. A public scandal would shake him. And that's what is going to happen if he threatens me anymore. 
Darlington couldn't tell him so from me, Holmes. I've always heard of Lord Darlington as the very model of an English aristocrat. Why should he threaten you, Mr. Tremaine? That's none of your business. Oh, my soul, none of your Your job is to see that he doesn't carry out his threat of thrashing me with an inch of my life. Very well. For 20 pounds, I shall warn Lord Darlington that I stand between you and a thrashing. The fee will be paid in advance, please. I have it in this envelope here. And I expect immediate action, Holmes. You shall have it, Mr. Tremaine. Holmes, the man's insufferable. Why'd you take on the case? He's a bounder. Let him get thrashed. These four crisp five-pound notes persuade me otherwise, Watson. We owe money to Mrs. Hudson, and your medical practice shows little signs of picking up. I must take what fees I can. Oh, how can my practice pick up when I spend half my time chasing all over the country with you? In any case, Watson, ask yourself why such a man as Lord Darlington should threaten Tremaine with physical violence. Obviously, only because Tremaine is himself in some way a threat to Lord Darlington. There may be yet another fee in this case, and a much fatter one. You're going to see Lord Darlington at once? Yes. I'd ask you to come with me, old chap, but after your remark about chasing all over the country, I hesitate to waste your time. Rubbish. I was only joking, and you know it, you silly fellow. Of course I'm going with you, Holmes. Get your coat and hat. The game's afoot. <laughs> Ten thousand pounds, my dear cousin, or the scandal will be spread all over London. It's preposterous, Reginald. And I warn you that if you continue in this vein, you'll get that thrashing, I promise. Oh, no, I won't. I've engaged a detective fellow by the name of Sherlock Holmes. He's going to act as a bodyguard. So you'd better not try any tricks. He should be here at any moment. How dare you bring a stranger into this mess? How dare you? That's right, my dear cousin. Bolster up your courage with the brandy bottle. Be quiet, Reginald. It'll cost you ten thousand pounds to keep me quiet. I won't pay it. The scandal will make pretty readings in the newspapers. Before we go any further, Reginald, I insist on one thing. I shall bring Lady Darlington to here, and you must make this shocking accusation to her face. I shall be delighted to. Yes, Jenkins, what is it? Excuse me, Your Lordship. But there's a Mr. Sherlock Holmes and a Dr. Watson to see you. I told them that you were engaged, but they seem most insistent. Better have them come in, my dear cousin. We may need independent witnesses. Oh, very well. Show the gentleman in, Jenkins. Yes, your lord. And then if you'll ask Lady Darlington to come here, I'll be very glad to make my accusation in public. It's blackmail, Reginald. That's what it is. You'll never get away with it. <laughs> Won't I? I think you'll be surprised. Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Allow me to introduce my cousin, gentlemen, Lord Darlington. How do you do? How do, you do? Uh, Jenkins? Yes, Your Lordship. Ask Lady Darlington to step in here for a moment. Yes, Your Lordship. Lord Darlington, I greatly admired your speech in the House of Lords on tax reform. I only wish we had met under different circumstances. As it is, it is my duty oh, to that's reform... all right, Holmes. I've already told my dear cousin that I'd engaged your services. I want you both here as witnesses. Witnesses? To what? Reginald has made a shocking accusation. As soon as my wife comes here, I'm going to insist that he repeat the statement to her face. Oh, there you are, Clara. I'll just put Gordon to sleep, dear. Hello, Reginald. How are you, Clara? My dear, I want to introduce Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. How do you do? But do sit down, won't you? Oh, Oh, but what's wrong? You all look so dreadfully serious. Clara, my dear... Reginald has made a shocking accusation. It concerns you. And I insisted that he repeat it in your presence. An accusation against me? Yes, Clara, my dear. You see, I'm requesting a paltry sum for concealing my knowledge of the Darlington substitution scandal. Substitution? What on earth do you mean? Well, who should understand me better than you? The baby asleep upstairs. The supposed heir to the Darlington title is not your child. That's a lie. How dare you say that, Reginald? Lord Darlington, surely you were present at your son's birth? Well, as a matter of fact, I wasn't. I was abroad on government business at the time. My wife went to the country with a paid companion. My son was born there. Oh, no, my dear cousin. A son was born there, and then it was passed off as yours. That's a foul lie. Albert, make him leave this house. I'm afraid, Clara, my dear, that, well, he's threatened to go to the newspapers. We must hear him out. Lord Darlington... Surely the matter is not hard to settle. You say your wife had a companion. 
confront her with a story. She can establish the truth of the matter. Yes, of course she can, but where is she? I haven't seen Maud Harris since she left me a year ago. Then I have a surprise for you, Clara. She's waiting in my cab outside now. I'll tell Jenkins to send her in. Jenkins? Yes, sir? Ask Miss Harris to join us. She's waiting in my cab. Yes, sir. Albert, I don't know what devil's work Reginald's up to, but you don't believe him, do you? Of course not, Clara, darling. Mr. Tremaine, how did you get in touch with this uh, Miss Harris? For an employee, you ask a lot of questions, Holmes. I met Maud Harris at Brighton last week. As soon as she knew I was the black sheep of the Darlington clan, she thought we might profitably put our heads together. And so you organized with the idea of blackmailing this poor lady. Mm, such a valuable secret is surely worth a few thousand pounds, Dr. Watson. Maud. Yes, Lady Darlington, it's me. You're just in time to settle a most important truth. I'll handle this, Reginald. Young lady, as I understand it, you claim to know that the boy lying upstairs is not my son. You should know better, Your Lordship. He's mine. Lord, how can you tell such a lie? It's no lie, and you know it, Lady Darlington. Your child was born dead. Albert, make us stop saying such things. Here, my dear, control yourself. Let's hear this shocking tale to the end. Well, go on, young woman. You were abroad, Lord Darlington. When her ladyship lost her child, she was terrified. She knew how much you longed for a son, and she made this plan. Oh. I was a widow, and I was going to have a child, too. We fooled the villagers, even the doctor, by giving each other's names. And so my son was born as the Darlington heir. Lord, that's the most shocking lie I've ever heard. I can't stay here and listen to any more of it. Mr. Holmes, I understand you're a man of discretion and ability in such matters. What am I to do? I would like to ask this young lady a few questions. Miss Harris, why have you chosen to reveal the supposed truth now? I thought that money could compensate me for the loss of my boy. But I was wrong. A mother's love can never be stifled. Indeed, and I suppose Mr. Tremaine's plans for blackmail are purely incidental. Oh, keep out of this, Watson. It's no affair of yours. Establishing truth and justice is anybody's business, my good man. Mr. Holmes, I'll pay you any fee you name to disprove this monstrous story. Oh, no, you don't, my dear cousin. Holmes is employed by me. Mr. Tremaine, I have undertaken to protect your physical safety. That pledge I will keep. Otherwise, I'm a free agent. Then you'll accept my commission? Yes, Lord Darlington, on one condition. And what's that? You have asked me to disprove this story. I would prefer that you ask me to establish the truth. Of course, Holmes, and spare no expense. Remember, the honor of the Darlingtons is at stake. <laughs> Well, Holmes, little did I think when Tremaine called on us this morning that we'd end up the day tramping a village lane in Surrey, looking for a Dr. Godfrey. And yet, that gentleman must surely be able to give us the final answer. Lady Darlington said that he attended Yes, her. but supposing the companion's story was true and they had changed names. Even so, the good doctor will certainly know whether the boy was born to a slight blonde woman like Lady Darlington... Or a brunette Amazon like Maud Harris. Well, here's the doctor's house. They said in the village it was the one with the gable roof. Hmm. No lights visible. I hope the doctor's not out. Doesn't seem to be any answer. Confound it. I don't believe there's anyone at home. And you will observe, Watson, that this morning's delivery of milk still stands on the doorstep. Curious. Let's explore a little. Well, perhaps the doctor's gone away for a few days. If so, he's a very careless man. Look, that window's wide open. You think we might go in and look round? We not only might, we will go in. Too much is at stake to stand on ceremony. Strike a match, Watson. Right, you are. I'll light that lamp. There you are. Holmes! Holmes, look, look, look! The figure slumped over the desk. Someone has reached the doctor before us. He's been shot through the chest. He's dead, Holmes. How long would you estimate he's been dead, Watson? Oh, uh, about 24 hours, I say. So now we've become involved in murder as well as blackmail. Well, the answer's perfectly obvious to me. Tremaine came here and shot him. He knew that he could never blackmail Lord Darlington while this doctor was still alive. Not necessarily, Watson. If the story of the substitution is true, you must realize that one other person would have an equal motive for murder. It's cut, Holmes. Who? Lord Darlington himself. Well, 
Well, Dr. Watson, so you went to interview that village doctor and arrived there to find him dead. Yes, Mr. Bell, but before we reported the tragedy to the police, Sherlock Holmes conducted an intensive search of the dead man's room. After a moment, he turned to me and said... Watson, we must see what the inanimate objects in this room can tell us. Aha, here's the doctor's appointment pad. Let's see who his last visitor was. Look, look, there's the name of Darlington. Yes, but that tells us little. If the companion's story is true, the word Darlington could refer to either of the women or to Lord Darlington himself. But what are these letters scribbled before the word Darlington? Why must doctors have such illegible handwriting? Doctors don't have illegible handwriting. I disagree. Hmm? In fact, I've often thought they train you to write badly in medical colleges. Yes. The letters are R E R E R E Darlington. That means that someone was calling about the Darlington case. A fact we already knew. Yes, yes, Let's see what else we can find. Hello. Look over here on the sideboard. Brandy decanter with a stubble of cloud. And one glass that has been drunk from. The killer must have had a drink after he shot the doctor. And in so doing, I think he gave us the clue to his identity. Oh, how? There's a speck on the rim of this glass. I think it's... Ah, the very thing. The doctor's microscope. Most convenient. What does it tell you, Holmes? Now, wait a minute. Uh-huh. I was right. This speck on the glass is wax. Wax? Then that means the murderer used a candle. Oh, no, Watson. Oh, then... Come on. We must go back to the village and report his death. And then we'll catch the next train to London. Uh, aren't you going to stay here and help the police? Why should I? Beyond telling them the name of the murderer. You mean you know who did it? Of course. And so should you. Well, I don't. But we don't know the answer to the Darlington substitution scandal. That answer, Watson, still lies in London. Nine thousand, nine thousand five hundred, ten thousand pounds. Well, there you are, Reginald. Thank you, my dear cousin. I'll put the money in my bag, Reginald. Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Lord Darlington, that sheet of banknotes in Miss Harry's hand. Surely you didn't pay the blackmail. I discussed the matter with my wife, Mr. Holmes. She's deeply upset. We both agreed that the scandal, once started, would cling to us for life, even if it was disproved later. That's why I paid the money. You engaged me as your representative in this case, Lord Darlington. Miss Harris, give that money back at once. It was a gift from Lord Darlington, in front of a witness. If you try to touch it, I shall send for a policeman. That won't be necessary. Two of them are waiting in the anteroom now. Police! Oh, Holmes, you shouldn't have done it. I wanted no breath of this scandal to emerge from beyond these four walls. The fact that police are here has nothing to do with the problems of blackmail. I brought them here to apprehend a murderer. A murderer? Well, what do you mean? Dr. Godfrey, your wife's physician, was shot dead during the past 24 hours. He was killed before he could tell us the true answer to the parentage of the child upstairs. Murdered? Oh, what a dreadful thing. Have you any idea who did it? Every idea, Lord Darlington. But before I expose the criminal, I'd be obliged if you bring Lady Darlington here. And also the child. Oh, very well, Holmes. This is going to be a terrible shock to us. You're suddenly very quiet, Mr. Tremaine. Am I? I was wondering who might have killed Dr. Godfrey. Fortunately, we don't have to wonder. The murderer left a clue. After he'd committed the crime, he made the mistake of taking a drink. Darlington's quite a drinking man, you know. And you have been known to take a drink on occasions too, Mr. Tremaine. For instance, uh, after you'd killed Dr. Godfrey. After I... What rubbish are you saying? You see, the murderer left a tiny blob of wax on the glass. Oh, what does that prove? Merely that someone had been carrying a candle. But this wasn't candle wax. It was cosmetic wax, such as you used to wax that pointed moustache of yours. Reginald. All right, all of you, I'm getting out of here. <gasps> He's left my bag. Reginald, come back here. I'll go after him. No, no, Watson. The police are prepared to arrest him, but not the young lady. We shall need her cooperation in the last act of this little tragedy. Surely the whole thing's clear by now. If Tremaine killed the doctor, obviously the whole story about the substitution is, is a lie. Not necessarily. Even if it were true, the doctor was still a menace to his plans. How could he and Miss Harris ask the highest price for their secret when the doctor also knew it? No, Watson. Tremaine had a motive for murder either way. In the meanwhile, I must set the stage before Lady Darlington gets here. Where'd I put that parcel? 
Oh, here it is. What the devil have you got in there, Holmes? A present from a plumber friend of mine. Though the object in this pa- package is only a simple tool of his trade, I feel that it may give us the answer to a peer's inheritance. Oh, my soul, you're being very mysterious. In a few moments, I propose to conduct a test. You must hide outside the windows. When I turn down the gaslight over the mantel here, Watson, I want you to strike a match, apply to the object in this package, and toss it through the open window. At the same time, cry out the word fire at the top of your voice. Oh, I remember that. I think the results of the experiment may prove quite startling. Lord Darlington, now that all the principles in this case are assembled, I shall conduct my experiment. Very well, Holmes. I don't see why I had to bring the boy down here. It's long past his bedtime. I assure you, Lady Darlington, that his presence is absolutely essential. Please place him in the bassinet on the sofa. All right. Uh, That's it. And you, Miss Harris, will you be good enough to place your handbag on the table? Mm, Very well, Mr. Holmes. But no funny business now. The police took it away from Reggie and gave it back to me. That money's mine. Each of you ladies claim to be the mother of that boy. Since scientific tests of parentage are notoriously unreliable... I shall conduct a simple experiment, which I think may give us the truth in this matter. Now, I want both you ladies to come toward me with outstretched hands. That's it. I turn down the gaslight over the mantel. So. Ah! Ah! Oh, dear, oh, dear, it's all right. All right. It's all right. If you look closely, you'll observe that this object is a perfectly harmless plumber's smoke rocket. Ah! Ah! You can drop the mess away, Watson. The case is solved. Ah! Oh, you know, Holmes, what on earth are you up to? You'll notice that on the cry of fire, Miss Harris ran for her handbag containing the ten thousand pounds. Lady Darlington instinctively rushed to her son. I think, Lord Darlington, that there can no longer be any question of the child's parentage. Midnight. <laughs> Been a long day, Holmes. Yes, but uh, profitable, Watson. A very profitable day's work indeed. Here's a thousand guineas from Lord Darlington. And uh, don't overlook the twenty pounds that Mr. Tremaine oh, gave me. John, he retained you for protection and you end up by sending him to the gallows. A fate that he richly deserves. I only wish I could have persuaded Lord Darlington to prosecute Miss Harris. Blackmail is a devilish crime. Why don't you think that a simple plumber's rocket... Smoked out the truth. Yes. Though, you'll remember, I've had occasion to use the instrument before. When a woman thinks her house is on fire, her impulse is at once to rush to the thing she values most. It's a perfectly overpowering instinct. Well, you certainly took advantage of the fact. Ah, well, Watson, you may remember the old Persian saying. There's danger for him who taketh the tiger cub, and danger for whoso snatches delusion from a woman. Oh, really? Oh, yes, Watson. There's as much sense in Hafiz as in Horace, and as much knowledge of the world. 